Hey doing everybody, good morning, it's Joe here. I'm just back from Denmark, it was a pretty successful course with another one coming up in October, so keep an eye out for that. I'll make an announcement there during the week on the dates or you can find that on trialbyfire.net. But I just wanted to take a moment, I was supposed to shoot a video last week before I left but I just didn't get time about this bad boy. The, the Joe Price Long Hunter from Weatherlings. There's a very limited run of these being made 100 to 150, possibly 200, we'll see. It seems to be a bit of a, uh, an interest <laughs> to say the least about it on the internet. But I'll just give you a bit of a backstory. Uh, last year, me and Steve and a couple of the guys went to the Moor Adventure, but before we did, we stopped off at the Wetterlings Axe Factory to visit the axe god that is Marcus Eslin. We had a tour around the place, and I keep journals, I keep a lot of notes on why I'm outside, what gear I'm using, why I'm using it, to help speed up what I'm doing out there and I have a, a couple of pages on what my idea of the perfect axe would be kind of like the Shelby Cobra a marriage of power versus weight and you know that kind of vibe you know I mean I'd, I wanted a pack axe but I didn't want all pack axes I usually around the like three pound four pound mark the head alone is two and a half pounds they don't really fit in your pack do they do the smaller work etc etc so while at the factory I managed to pick up one particular type of head, I managed to pick up one very distinct handle. I came home, one fan, very panicked phone call to Steve Armstrong and I put the axe together in my front garden and posted it on the Living Today community. It, it, it got an awful lot of interest and that was, that was very humbling. I've never hung an axe before in my life so that was really the point of the whole project. But then Chris Barrett came along. Chris Barrett, a very kind of famous moocher from the UK. I'm sure most of you guys would know who Chris is. He put one of the axes together as well in a very similar fashion and again gained a lot of interest. So light bulb moment. We all got around the round table and we started talking and, and working on things. Marcus Esslin came in, Jonas from Wetterlings came in. One kind of flight later, a year later, another more adventure and another visit to the Wetterlings factory. Steve and the guys sat down with, with Jonas and Marcus and <laughs> the long hunter was born. So I just thought I'd take this minute to to talk about it the specs the final product there has been a bit of kind of changes to it there was prototypes different heads different handle lengths etc etc that's why we were kind of keeping this stuff kind of closely guarded because we didn't really know when the prototype testing was finished what the the final result <coughs> would be and this is it you're looking at it now it comes with a standard weatherlings leather sheet you can see here this is zero zero one and before i get into the technical nerdy specs of it all this one is, is signed by me. I'm going to be at the Outcraft weekend at the 30th of August, where it'll be a, Steve Armstrong will also be there, and Marcus Eslin will also be there, and I'll be there to sign a very limited number of these before we go. We also have to figure out a distributor, which looks like we're going to happen, so maybe later in the month of September, people will be able to buy them internationally. Don't worry, you're not going to have to go visit the factory. But without further ado, I'll just, I'm no technical nerd, I'm a woodsman, I measure things with my hand, my head, my arms, so I'll get the technical specs out of the way off my cheat sheet here. The weight, and I'll do it in Imperial and Metric for the master races out there, the weight is 920 grams or two pounds overall. The overall length is 560 millimeters or 22 inches from there to there. The head width is 140 millimeters which is just the size I like, 5.5 inches. And the cutting face here is 68 millimeters or 2.6 inches. Now, the reason why I wanted to make this video is to talk a little bit about design intent. I design an awful lot of products, I test an awful lot of products, all kind of behind the scenes. And the one thing I find kind of will damage something before it ever gets a chance to get off the market is design intent. An awful lot of products on the bushcraft scene or the outdoor scene are kind of used a little bit outside of their original design intent and then people tend to get bad reviews or have a sour taste in their mouth about it but the product was never designed to do that. This product here isn't isn't really designed to to be like a big woods chopper and it isn't designed to like carve a spoon because they're all very specific tools. That's the one thing I noticed when I started looking at axes. A great quote from Dan Coppins from Battle Horse Knives when I was down there getting a chance to talk to him in October. He said to me, Joe, if you're ever really going to design anything, just forget all you know about it and design the tool that you need. So that's what I did. I got my journals out and all the guys got their journals out and we decided that this is what we do. 
The reason why it isn't kind of solely aimed at carving or solely aimed at felling trees is because if you notice, most of the people or most of the guys and girls who do that have very specific tools for those jobs. Whereas I find that most people who go outdoors, they're either camping or they're doing a bit of bushcraft or maybe they're just out for the day to have a bit of coffee. They need something that's kind of in the middle. Some, something that's not too specific at a lot of things, but can do what they needed to do. And that's where this comes into play. It's called the Long Hunter because the Long Hunter is just a badass name. That's the name that Chris Barrett picked. He was the one who, who christened this and kind of a tribute. We're all kind of Tomahawk guys, and you can see that this is kind of Tomahawk inspired. We think they're the kind of perfect ones. It doesn't have a flay pole. There have been a lot of questions about that on the internet. And for those who don't know, a flay pole is usually a rounded, polished pole for processing game or or furs or skins. The reason why this doesn't have one is because, I mean, I was a butcher for two years and I, I mean, I've been in the, the outdoors world for quite some time and I've never really known anybody to butcher game using their axe. Not saying that it's not there, but I personally have not yet a, not yet met a common woods person that has done that. Plus, if you want to add a flay pole, that it's extra cost. Anything that keeps these axes or keeps any product on the assembly line for longer is going to add cost to it. These are all hand assembled and hand finished and hand ground by Marcus Eslin himself. So that's why we're trying to keep these the way they are. So we just left the flay pole off it. There's no need for a flay pole because what we notice most of the time when the average woods person is out and about, they use this as a hammer, pure and simple. Ten stakes, tripods, pot hangers. Most of the time you're using your axe for a, for a hammer. Even one guy who <laughs> hung a shelf with his one. So it's just a nice one like that smacking timber frames together for raised beds and stuff. So we just decided to leave it as a hammer pole because most people will get the use out of that. It's got the smaller head on it. And this one, if you notice, and this is where Steve Armstrong's beautiful genius came into play. He changed the original grind from the grind that was on these small forest heads and kind of tapered it in. And Steve and Marcus worked on this a long time. So mo what we notice most of the time is that you're using your, your ax either for making feather sticks or for splitting wood. That's really about it. Those who, like I said, who carve spoons or fell trees have really specific access for them. Not saying that you couldn't do it with this, but it'd just be a little different. So we wanted it to be able to do the finer work, like make a few feather sticks or you know, put a few spikes or a few shavings or maybe even a notch or two into a stick, but also be a brilliant splitter. So the weatherling's kind of steep convex is being removed with kind of a shallower kind of convex there, which is so you can see there, thereabouts. And we kept the head nice and small because we wanted this to fit in people's packs. So most packs or most hiking packs, we most people outdoors, if you notice, it just it doesn't take much to do this kind of research. It's not like we discovered the Rosetta Stone of bushcraft, but not everybody carries the same pack. Some carry the old school canvas, some carry the new school technical hiking stuff, but everybody has a water bottle pocket. Most packs will have a water bottle pocket that sits on the side. So you can this will fit in most of those elasticated pockets nice and comfortably and still be big enough to do what you needed to do. The handle is also nice and tapered to fit in those old school axe sleeves or it's short enough that if you fit it into a, a 40 to 60 liter pack for those of us who can't walk around with axes on the outside of our bag it is, is a true pack axe where you can put it in and kind of leave it there. Next of all onto the handle. The handle is um, uh, Les Stroud Bushman handle is just being slightly tinned out, slightly tapered to make it more uniform, more comfortable to the grip because like with the Shelby Cobra that I mentioned earlier, that lightness managed to power. You can grab the handle very comfortably all the way down. So when you got to do light work, this head that's just literally over a pound is very maneuverable, very nimble. You stick it in, do your drag feather sticks. You can work your whole hand up around the head the cutting surface isn't too big to get in there. But then the handle has a very easy to index contour. So you're using the fulcrum effect of a long straight handle, kind of like a tomahawk or a small belt ax. So maybe if you got to do a bit of splitting, you can choke down on it here. Maybe you got to do a bit of bigger splitting, you can choke down on it here. And when you got to do some really big splitting and some felling, some light felling, this will fell. You can choke down here towards the, the taper foot and swing. And then suddenly this one pound head has an awful lot of momentum behind it. Those laws of physics, my friends, has an awful lot of momentum behind it. So you're getting a lot more power for your smaller head. And that's where the Long Hunter kind of comes into play. It's, it's a very versatile kind of larger scaled tomahawk, if you will. So you can see the, the head in it there. 
So again, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the design intent of it. And also, these are original Wetterlings parts. There's been a bit of controversy back and forth over Grand's Forest owns this and who owns that. These are all taken from the old stores of the Wetterlings factory. Um, where they've been kept in the attic, <laughs> nice and safe and dry. And then Marcus has managed to pull his some amazing strings. And these are all OG, old school Wetterlings parts. Put together by Marcus himself, modified to the dimensions of, of what we all thought would make it a, a great axe. And they're all due to be released at Outcraft the 30th of August and then to a distributor later in September. Thank you very much guys for all the interest. I mean without everybody that supports me, supports Steve, supports Chris, living to learn retro outdoor equipment and all the, the various enterprises that we're involved in, this would not have happened. This is a very special axe, not just because um, it's, it's something that I've had a major hand in, but also because it's brought back to life a factory that was all but written off. This is the first axe to come out of the Wetterlings factory in a very long time. This is the first axe to be put together with original Wetterlings parts made by a man who has Wetterlings in his veins and designed by people who just genuinely love the outdoors. So it's probably the first all-round common outdoors person axe that has been on the market in a long time. And again, thank you. A very humble thank you from me and all the guys. And just because we are the way we are, we know that these things don't happen. I am going to carry this axe with me around the world for the next five or six weeks, eight weeks. And I'm going to get Chris and Steve and all the Woodsy friends and all the people involved to sign this axe. And then we're going to auction it off for charity. There you go. This will be 001 of the Long Hunter. And hopefully we'll get some nice signatures on there. And then we can have a bit of fun. We maybe let you guys choose which charity it goes to. So there you go, I did want to make a big super fancy video, but I'm not a super fancy outdoorsy guy, and neither is the axe that I carry, so here I am, out here at the woodshed, doing what I do. If you have any questions at all, I will tag Chris, and I'll tag Steve, and I'll tag the legend that is Marcus, and you can comment down below, and hopefully we can answer them. Because there's been a bit of a, been a, bit of a buzz around the internet, to say the least, about this bad boy. And I hope that everybody who wants one can get their hands on them. As always, thank you so much for your support. And thank you so much for supporting me and my journey through the outdoors. And hopefully I'll see you in a forest soon. As always, have a great day. Namaste. Peace.